Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. An exclusive ASMFC Stripe Bass update this week, some rod building tips, and some hard water opportunities in the Garden State, all included in our first video forecast for the month of February 2021. I'm Jim Hutchinson with the New Jersey Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine reporting on the heels of a nor'easter slash blizzard to start the week. Snow wise, not much to speak of in my part here in Northern Ocean County along the coast. Most folks experience the same thing. Beaches were battered once again. There was some pretty severe coastal flooding. I know a couple of folks had a little bit of damage to cars and houses, but hopefully you made it just fine. But things should be brightening up portside by this weekend if you're looking to get out and score a few fish. Now, this is the time of year where a lot of boats come out and do a little bit of maintenance, but you still do have an opportunity or two. In Belmar, for example, the Ocean Explorer, uh, she'll be out again on Saturday, I believe. Their last trip before the storm had some, uh, some good action. Six blackfish over 10 pounds, a bunch of six to eight pounders, and a whopper of a fish, 14 pounds. For some of those hardcore guys looking to get out of Belmar and jump on those tog grounds, the Ocean Explorer. Joe Tomaszewski, he let me know that he hit a wreck south of Manasquan just a couple of weeks back on the waterproof. Uh, he had a 12 pounder on a two ounce toggy time um, a white legger color jig. He was using 20 pound Power Pro, 30 pound Top Shot, and a Kevin Bogan spinning outfit. Now that Bogan family, of course, you know if there's fishing to be done, it's the Bogan somewhere along the line. It's a pick here and there, but another Bogan that could put you on the meat this weekend is the Jamaica 2 out of Bogan's Basin. I understand that headboat is back on the Blackfish grounds as of Friday. Meanwhile, next door at the Big Jamaica, uh, Captain Bogan tells us the offshore action was so good last weekend, they've actually got the Paramount running in conjunction with the Jamaica. Some jumbo porgies, I think some ling, uh, probably a couple of cod in the mix as well. Usually this time of year, in years past, this is when we get a couple of weak fish reported on the big Jamaica as well on some of those offshore trips. I'm, I'm anxious to see what kind of surprise catches come in the next couple of weeks. Regrettably, the farther south you go into Southern Ocean County, Barnegat, uh, on down into Atlantic and Cape May counties, and of course across the bay to Lewis and Indian River, not many boats sailing. Most of the guys that are sailing at this point are private anglers who've got their boats maybe in bubblers, uh, but there's just not much going on. Perch has been the best available action in those brackish rivers and a tidal creeks, tidal creeks right off the Delaware. Uh, folks looking for a score down in the state of Delaware. Of course, you can go down to the Morris, the Kahansi, Great Egg, uh, Mullica River Perch Bite, Grass Shrimp, Live Killies, and the blood worms too. And the blood worms, of course, working on your way up into the Toms River as well. Again, you can go to saltwaterunderground.com. Look up Nick Honachewski's information. He's got a Perchapalooza uh, a special show with Captain Dave uh, from Absecan Bay Sportsman. You can find that on the Sportsman's channel. Uh, go to your cable provider, look up Sportsman Channel, DVR that show from Nick because he's got some pretty good advice on fishing for white perch while he's out there with Captain Dave from Absecan Bay. And of course, Dave has some of the baits you need if you're looking to get into that. I do know that some folks that are out there in the back fishing for perch are also stumbling uh, across a few holdover stripers as well, which is a good sign for when that season opens up on March 1st. We're only three weeks out from the start of striper fishing in the state of New Jersey. Of course, the big consideration in 2021, as you're soaking those blood worms, is you're gonna have to rig those blood worms and clams on a circle hook, brand new tactic for 2021. Uh, you can go over uh, to thefisherman.com. I did that webinar last Thursday. It's an hour long. If you didn't get a chance to sit through it, pour yourself a cup of coffee or something stronger, and you can check it out at thefisherman.com because I try to cover some of those issues with the availability of bait holder style hooks, uh, some hacks that you can do, and of course, bridling baits. Big questions, lots of questions, lots of good questions. But the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission met for five hours on Wednesday. Toby Lipinski and I both sat through that meeting. We we're texting back and forth. But Toby's got a great update on what came out of that and some of the questions that you have and perhaps some of the answers to come. Well, I just finished sitting through some, I don't know what time is it here, five hours of uh, uh, 
web-based meeting with the Atlantic State Marine Fisheries Commission, specifically the Striped Bass Management Board. Actually, both Jim Hutchinson and I were sitting in on this meeting, attending, uh, and as far as I could tell from the meeting attendee list, we were the only media, fishing related or otherwise, to be in attendance on this meeting. So. As you would expect from the Fisherman Magazine, this is a Fisherman Magazine exclusive breaking news item for you. Uh, so we announced last week, uh, uh, in, earlier this week in the E! News letter that the Striped Bass Board was going to be discussing several topics this week. Uh, they met at 1.45 Wednesday afternoon. The first hour or so, they addressed a handful of other agenda items, but it was somewhere around that 315 range where they really touched upon or began discussing what we were most interested in at this point in time. Uh, and that is circle hooks, bait, and striped bass. And it was uh, uh, the discussion began by addressing the proposal, which was presented by the states of Massachusetts and Maine, for the tube and worm jig. That's, that's right, tube and worm jig, not something I'm terribly familiar with in my striped bass fishing, but that's that's how it was referred to by the board member. Um, anyway, they got onto the subject discussing the viability of circle hooks on the tube and worm rig uh, with a sandworm attached, uh, eventually being that the motion was, uh, or the proposal was brought about by Massachusetts and Maine, the state sitting in between them. New Hampshire was uh, um, questioned on to how their thoughts were on it, being that they were going to be sandwiched potentially in between these regulations. And they expressed extreme opposition uh, uh, to the proposal for, uh, among other reasons, because the New Hampshire representative has a gear item in mind that could be commercially sold to produce the circle hooks uh, on, on the tube and worm rigs, but I guess that's a subject for another day. Um, eventually the discussion continued. No other gear types were addressed with the proposal. That means the bucktail jig, the eel skin rig, um, uh, rigged eels, stuff like that was not addressed in this proposal. Eventually, a uh, motion was made to accept the proposal, uh, uh, which also added in a study to be initiated by a committee to be formed shortly, um, which would, over a two-year span, study the circle hook or J-hook deep hooking uh, idea concept on the tube and worm. And in this two year span, anglers would be allowed to use the tube and worm, worm rig without a circle hook, which means a standard tube and worm rig, J-hook, sandworm deal is was being proposed and eventually it passed. The only two states that were in opposition of this proposal was uh, New Hampshire, as we noted earlier, and the state of New York. So the motion passed, so officially, this weekend, as of this week, for the next two years anyway, you do not need a circle hook on a tube and worm rig when you attach some sort of natural bait to the end of it. Uh, this further led to a subsequent motion or, or modification of the motion to develop, let me read the words here, a definition of bait that would require the use of circle hooks by March of 2021 intended to lead Two, by definition, the exemption of certain scenarios from the circle hook requirement and clarify those scenarios which would require a circle hook. Subsequently, it was modified, it passed uh, uh, unanimously, it was subsequently modified to include the, um, the wording of as soon as possible uh, in the event that they're able to get it done sooner or if it takes them a little bit longer. And additionally, the motion was amended to include um, incidental catches, such as, let's just say, for example, if you're targeting bluefish, fluke, sea bass, what have you, and you happen to catch a striped bass, but you're using a J-hook. So hopefully some clarification will come of that. Are you allowed to keep the fish under that scenario? Do you have to release it? Are you? Is it illegal to harvest the fish at that time? So hopefully coming out of this, we're going to have some sort of clarification again to that as well. Sort of all leads back to the earlier issue, the oversight by the board back in the fall. But nonetheless, we have at least one answer for you here going forward officially, tube and worm rigs, Bare minimum for the next two years, do not require a circle hook when you attach bait to them. Of course, as this story develops and additional hearings and motions and proposals, etc., are uh, uh, become known, we're going to pass that information along to you. But until then, be sure to stay tuned to The Fisherman Magazine and thefisherman.com.
Obviously a lot of tube and worm discussion, which is emanating for the most part from the New England states, but we still have the questions on the pork rinds, on the bucktails, and the eel skins, and the rigged eels. So hopefully we'll find out more from that ad hoc committee. Uh, the other component was uh, incidental catch, because I have a question. What if I'm behind LBI and I'm live grass shrimping for weak fish this summer, and on one of my little shad darts with a live grass shrimp, I hook into a 29 inch striped bass. Can I keep that fish? And what if I let it go? Isn't that equally illegal and immoral? <laughs> Those are the questions that the ASMFC ad hoc committee will be coming up with. So we'll be staying on top of that just as we did for that meeting this week. So stay tuned to the Fisherman Magazine for more on that. Uh, here in Ocean County, I only had to uh, shovel a couple of inches of snow. Uh, others got hit hard. I think here in uh, New Jersey, the, the, the leader of the snowpack was up in Montague. Uh, or maybe Mount Arlington, which I knew had, they had 35 inches of snow. Uh, Sparta and Hepatcong, they were just north of 30 inches. But for ice fishermen, it's a good thing because we have this deep freeze and with the snow as well, sometimes not great for the ice. But I do know that the folks in Dalles, Dalles Boat Rentals up there on Lake Hepatcong, they're finally talking about some good ice conditions. So if you're looking to uh, stand around a hole and catch some white perch, or, or yellow perch, I would say, uh, maybe a hybrid striper or a pickerel or something bigger, you got that opportunity. I know saltwater striper manic, maniac, tie man, Chuck Manny, he headed him, himself up there to Sparta, fished Lake Je uh, Jefferson Lake found the hard water quite appropriate for catching some jumbo largemouth and other species of fish. For more on the hard water opportunities inland, let's check in with my friend George, the Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. Well, it looks like us hardwater guys wished a little too much for some better conditions. Got way more than we asked for. But I'll tell you what, the it, conditions are improving out in the lakes. I know it's a lot of snow, and sometimes snow can hurt the ice, but we have some a lot of cold weather coming in. Temperatures down probably to zero this weekend. So that's really going to help solidify a lot of the ice we have and create a lot of new ice, especially down here in the Poconos. We are starting to see lakes like Beltsville in the back starting to freeze. I haven't been to Ma Chunk yet, but I'll try to get some reports from Ma Chunk, maybe even Lisa, or see if these southern lakes are finally freezing up, letting us get on there. Now, a couple guys are getting some fish, and I got a couple to share with you. Good friend Dave Kyle was out at Hills Creek State Park. And he got into a couple of really nice perch. I know these are heading for the fry pad. Good work there, Dave. Also, check this out at Promised Land State Park, young Noah Pocogini, and I hope I'm saying that right, got into this monster bass through the ice. That's a PB for anyone, and Noah picked one out through through an ice hole. Fantastic job, Noah. Well, I'll tell you what, guys, it's going to take me a few more days to dig out here, but I hope you guys are out getting uh, on some ice. Get those fish, get on them, and we'll catch you next time. From Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. So again, the February edition of the Fisherman Magazine, it's been out for two weeks. If you haven't gotten your copy as a subscriber, drop me an email or post there on YouTube. Let's stay in touch because you should have gotten this. I hope you've gotten it. It's a great, it's a great edition, of course. We've got the full rundown on Sully's pending state record tog there on the cover, a 25.8 pound fish, still pending. State of New Jersey works slow. So it could be a little while. White perch in there, an electronics buyer's guide. Uh, of course, we also have more information on rigging with circle hooks. It's all in there. Uh, also an article from my dad, Hutch Sr. And he's talking about some of the expatriates from New Jersey running down to Florida, running charters. And also, of course, all these guys that are running down there to fish. So you've got a full detail in there and some local contacts for you if you want to go fishing in Florida, like Jose Cerube Lopez, who's constantly telling me all about the striper fishing in Atlantic and Cape May County during the season around the bridges. And then I get a photo of tarpon around the bridges. Thanks, Jose. I really appreciate that. Folks are jonesing back home to get back in on the action. Like I said, we've only got a couple of weeks before that striped bass season opens in New Jersey. But there are so many folks that they want to do it right now, like nine-year-old Christian Habermas. He was one of 50 kids who received a complete Cortland fly fishing setup from Eric and crew at Tight Lines Fly Shop up in Parsippany. <laughs> and Christian's dad told me, quote, he was so excited to get that rod and reel outfit that he wanted to go fishing when it was in the 20, to 20 degree range. He should fish with some of my friends that were out there fishing in 20 degrees. I, on the other hand, and a wuss, 
That's why I'm sitting at my desk. Soon enough, friends, soon enough, if you are stuck at home and climbing the walls and going crazy, now's the time to start rigging up. We've got those circle hooks. Start tying those new circle hooks. Start doing the droppers, the high-low rigs that you're going to need using those circle hooks. Try Alan Riley's hack for creating a little bait holder um, style rigging on those circle hooks that don't have them. Or head into the shop, do a little rod work, something that I don't do. But that's why I'm going to tune in to see Matt's updates. Matt Broderick is our Long Island editor and he's going to head into the shop for the next few weeks and do a little bit of rod building. This week he's got a component on doing some guide wraps. So why don't you enjoy Matt's six minute tutorial on tying rod, uh, the, the guides, on doing those, those guides on your rod and then uh, I'll find some more fishing action for us to cover next week. See you again next week at thefisherman.com. Enjoy Matt's presentation. We got a couple questions in and one of them happened to be how to wrap a guide on a fishing pole. This is something that you really have to know for rod repairs and rod building. I say it's one of the most important things actually. Follow along with me and I'll show you how I do it personally. All right, everybody, wrapping a guide, let's get to it. First things first, you wanna have a certain set of tools right in front of you, easy to access. We have scissors, masking tape, this is quarter inch masking tape, and a ruler, the guide itself, high visibility thread so you guys can see better. We have the blank and we have our power wrapper. You can either use a power wrapper or you can use a hand wrapper. Mud Hole has both of these in stock. Um, like I said, you can go either way. This is more expensive, but the, the hand wrap will get the job done just as well. Okay, so first things first, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the guide itself and I'm gonna take a piece of tape. Piece like this will do. Take the guide right in the middle of the foot, tape like that. I'll make sure your, your blank is nice and uh, lined up where the real seat is. Hold the guy down and we're gonna tape it right in place, just like that. Make it nice and tight so it doesn't wiggle around. Okay, so that's in place. Next thing you wanna do is you wanna figure out the size of what your wrap is gonna be. That's where the ruler comes in handy. So we're gonna make this wrap an inch and a quarter from the bend of the foot all the way out. Okay, so now that you have an idea of where that thread is gonna to go to, we're gonna move on to the next step. Grab another piece of tape like this. Grab your thread this time. Tape your thread. We're gonna spin the, the blank a little. On the back side of the guide, tape that thread down just like that. Now we're gonna spin the thread down the foot of the guide to where we think that inch and a quarter mark is. Pick your ruler up again. I think it's right about there. It looks just about right. Just a little bit more. Okay, that's inch and a quarter. Now we're gonna go over that original wrap, one, two, three times. Okay, so after three times, that's all locked into place. We can take away our piece of tape holding the thread down, just like so. Okay, unwrap that. We take this right here, that gets snipped off. All right, so now we're all locked in. Now we can just go ahead and wrap. Give it a little speed, make sure everything is nice and tight too. All right, so we go right before the foot. You wanna go a little slower here just so it transitions up the foot of the guy nicely. Run the guide, go really slow. I said you want this transition to go smooth. Okay, we're up the foot of the guide. At this point, we can take the tape away off the, off the foot of the guide because the thread is holding that guide in place. Get ready to tape, do a little speed. Now at this point, 
you want to stop about an eighth of an inch before the end of the, um, the bend of the guide. Okay, right about there. So I have another spool of thread here. It's black, black thread. Take a piece about that big. We're going to cut that. Double that in half, just as so. Take that, slip it underneath this thread right here on the back side of the guide. So now you have a loop right here. This is your finishing loop. And we're going to wrap that extra eighth inch. Okay, so now it's time to finish it off. So what I'm going to do here is take my index finger, pinch down the thread, and cut. My index finger is holding this whole wrap together now. So it takes a little bit of coordination here, but take that thread, pass it through that uh, finishing loop. And we're gonna take this thread right here, hold the wrap thread, hold that tight, remove our index finger. Now this, our left hand is holding the whole wrap in place. Take our thread right here, our finishing thread, wrap it around our finger, Pull it nice and tight until we get it even snugged up right with the wrap. Okay, so now you can let go of everything. It's all tight, all in place. Now what we do is take a little razor blade. Very closely, we'll just pop that away. So this last step, take your finishing thread, wrap it around your next finger, pull, pull, and voila. Make sure your wraps are nice and tight. They sell little burnishing tools. We can get the wraps all nice and tight on mud hole as well. But that's the uh, the basics of it, wrapping a guide, guys. Remember to like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. Steigercraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious anglers choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.